Hello, I'm John Paul and I'm here at Rimmer Brothers today to service this Discovery 3 2.7 V6 diesel. Uh, this is going to cover years 04 to 09. Today we're going to service the engine, so we're going to change the oil filter, the oil, fuel filter, pollen filter and air filter. Now there are a few things that Land Rover suggests on the whole vehicle um, at certain mileages and times. Firstly the cam belt, 105,080 months. Um, the coolant every 10 years and they do suggest changing the flexible brake hoses every 72 months. That's because obviously they, they do perish and the summer bits of them tend to corrode. To gain access to the top of the engine where the oil filter is, you release the oil filler cap and pull up the top cover. The top cover is just held on by these little uh, rubber bobbins onto the little knobs for all the way around the thing. So once the cover's off the top of the engine, we can see the oil filter in the centre, so we'll get a spanner and we'll undo that. So with a 32mm socket and a ratchet, put it onto the top of the oil filter housing and undo it. It shouldn't be too tight, very tight to 25 newton meters, so it should be fairly easy. Once it's loose, keep on screwing it until it will lift up and you'll see the oil filter in the centre. I'll just show you how to take it out in a second. This is the oil filter housing, the oil filter inside. It is clipped in the bottom of the filter housing. You might just have to give it a big bit of a click to get it out. So that's the oil filter out. Now what we need to do is just clean out the oil filter housing, get a little picker or a screwdriver to change the o-ring. So you'll just have to get your picker under the o-ring to lift that out. And then we'll replace it with a new one before we refit it. I'll just fit the new seal in the oil filter housing. Just make sure that uh, when the seal is fitted in the groove, that it's not twisted in any way. It wants to be nice flat all the way around. So once that in, we can get the oil filter, push it into the housing, click it in place. You'll see a little uh, nog in there. It will pick up a hole in the bottom of the filter housing when you refit it. Then you screw it down and tighten it to 25 newton meters. Fairly simple to remove the air filter housing. If you just slacken off the Jubilee clip for the induction pipe, just pull off the, the uh, electrical plug to the airflow meter, then the seven Phillips screws around the outside. So once that's there all out, you sure just lift up all the screws out nicely, then you can just pull it out the induction pipe, place that to one side, and then we can remove the air filter. As you can see underneath the older air filter, the air filter is doing its job. It's catching all the all the debris that's come in. So just once the uh, the air filter's out of the way, just clean out the air box. Either cover the intake pipe and do it with an airline, or get a Hoover in there, or just clean out it best you can before you fit the new air filter. And then that's just the reverse. You just get the housing, clip it back into the induction pipe. Be careful to place it back into place, nice and square, so the air filter don't get caught. Then tighten up all your screws. Put your airflow meter screw back on and tighten up your Jubilee clip for your induction pipe. The pollen filter or cabinet filter as it's known is located behind the glove box which you know when you first pull it down it does seem a bit of a pain to get undone but it's not difficult. There's two uh, catches either side and all they do, can you see the little hook there, that hooks in the plastic. So to release it you just have to, don't pull it all the way out, just, release, just to leave it so it's not quite open fully and if you just squeeze in either side and then it will just release down so the, the the glove box will sit down flat like that and then the pollen filter is located right at the top you'll see the heater motor in front of you right at the top and it is just a squeeze plastic squeeze little uh, clip like that we'll put that out of the way and then you can jump in there and remove the pollen filter so we'll just reach up Remove the pollen filter, and there it is there. Replacing the filter is obviously the reverse, but just make sure it's got an arrow with the airflow, so make sure you get the airflow coming into the vehicle through the filter on the correct side, and then into the car so it works properly. So it's just a case, refitting it, 
which is fairly straightforward. Once that's plonked into place, you then, you've got the little cover that, so it's two little clips that slide into one side and then that's the locking catch that holds it in and seals the filter. We're going to jack the vehicle up now to drop the oil, but before we do that, we need to put it into the safe jacking mode. So we need to start the engine up, make sure all the doors are closed, put the high suspension control button forward into the high position. You'll hear the compressor run. It'll pump it up to its high position. And when the lights on the dash indicate it's in its high, highest most position, you'll turn the ignition off and it's safe to jack. We're going to release the under tray from underneath the engine now, so we can drain the oil. Now, um, there's a, just a series of 13mm spanner sized bolts to take out of. Now, just remember, it will be fairly heavy and it will be full of a lot, quite a lot of muck, so just be careful. Time to drain the oil, so 13mm spanner, crack off the sump plug, push it down, and then just unscrew it, just be careful not to spill any if you can, sump plug is out, there we go, let the oil drain, um, as I fit a new sump plug it's always beneficial because it has a new washer on it, um, and then we'll go up and fill the oil. So the oil's out, so we'll just put the new sump plug in, screw it in by hand, and then tighten it up, 25 newton meters, so and that's that done. Great, so now we can do the fuel filter first, then we'll lower the vehicle down, top it up with oil, and then we're ready to roll. The fuel filter is located just behind the engine next to the gearbox, so there's another little under tray to take off, four uh, M6, which is 10mm spanner sized bolts. Now, they do screw into fairly poor captive, um, captive nuts. Now, if they spin, you've got to try and get behind them to hold them with some grips to undo them or cut the bolts off and put new ones in. They're just one of those awkward things that they seize up. It's just one of those things. So here's the fuel filter here. There's a little uh, M6, but it's an 8mm spanner size bolt to clamp the filter. And then there's four pipes at the top. Um, we'll, uh, we'll show them a little bit closer later. It is just a push fit pipe, so the two little nogs to push in and then you pull the pipes off, but I'll show you that in a second. These fuel filters on these uh, discoveries, they're, they're not the easy things in the world to get off, they're difficult, but it's just the location and the access is very tight. The, here you can see the four pipes on the top of the fuel filter. If you can see, the, 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 uh, the, clip, the pipes go on and they clip over these little ridges here. So to take them off, there, you'll see when you're actually looking at the job, there's two little plastic lugs either side that you have to push in and then pull off. So even that is, is difficult with your hands. I mean, I've got a pair of these pliers. There are various things you can buy and you just squeeze in the two little plastic lugs and you can pull the pipe off. But even with them, they are, they are a difficult job. They're tight and the access is fairly poor, but the refitting is a lot easier because you just have to push them up, push the pipes down and they automatically clip over each of those lugs. And once they're on, they're on. So here's the new fuel, fuel filter going in. Now there's the, there's the four pipes you can see and there's the bracket that holds the fuel filter. Uh, as you can see, it is fairly tight. So as I was trying to get undo, undo the pipes, it was difficult to do the pipes and do the film at the same time. So, but they are color, co co color coordinated on the top of the fuel filter to the relevant pipes. And it is just a case of literally fitting it up and pushing each pipe on individually. And once it's done, that's okay. I've filled the engine with five and a half litres of oil um, and then if you turn the ignition on you'll hear the fuel pump start to run. When the fuel pump stops running it'll fill the fuel filter and you can start the engine, wait for the oil filter light to go, uh, oil light to go out and then let it cool down, check the oil, top it up if necessary, nip underneath, check if there are any leaks anywhere and if it's all okay put the under trays back on, put the bonnet down and then way to go.